Well, we're here at uh, an event about social reporting, and I suppose you can't escape being videoed by social reporter John Popham. <laughs> and all I was saying to kick things off was let's ask the old reporting questions if we're th exploring social reporting. The who, the how, the where, the why, the when. And different people um, may be doing stuff that's kind of social reporting, whether they call it that or, or not, using a mixture of different methods of video, text, audio, and so forth. Probably doing it quite often. Why are they doing it? Well, I think probably with some social values, and we could explore um, what's the difference between social reporting values and some mainstream journalism values. I think mainstream journalism still has quite a lot of the crisis you know, celebrity conflict underlying news values. So is social reporting more about collaboration and consensus and celebration? But the values issue seems really interesting to me. And where does it take place? Well, um, I and I think other people over the last few years have done a lot around events because events are a great opportunity to pull out your video camera, uh, tweet stuff, blog, and so on. So social reporting, um, I think is burgeoned around that, and you may also get paid for it, which is pretty um, important. But as well as events, uh, you may be doing this locally, in which case you're probably calling yourself a community reporter, or a community journalist, or a citizen journalist. Or you may be doing it in an organisation, where an organisation may be becoming more networky, as Beth Cantor has uh, uh, written um, in her Books she co-authored, um, network non-profits, organisations increasingly need to think about themselves as having a network of people they work with, of members and so on. So how do you make all that stuff work when well, you need somebody who's doing the online um, facilitation, content creation and so on? Um, and across networks. So since stuff is happening in so many different places, um, how do you join up the conversations? How do you make sense uh, of what's going on? As Mike was saying earlier, how do you take all the clouds of, of tweeting, of blogging, um, and extract stuff from that to play back to people and say, kind of, is this the story? So I think social reporters are doing, still doing that thing which reporters should do well, which is sniff out, you know, here's something of interest. But I think they're doing it uh, hopefully in a way which is helpful to people. So that was my kind of first take on it, but I've got another little mind map which is about, well, what do social reporters actually do? And obviously I'm not defining it. I mean, there is no definition of it. We can make it up as we go along. All I'm doing is playing back a framework which has been useful to me. Do you want the next mind map or should we talk about this one? Um, a, year, a, a year or two back, um, a year or two back, uh, I was on a, on a bus with my iPhone, um, pondering about stuff. And I, I think the best ideas sometimes come, you know, when you're out just wandering about rather than sitting at your desk in front of a computer. And um, <clears throat> I just picked up yet another app, and I sort of mind mapping app. So I started doodling with that, um, and I ended up with something. I've changed it a bit since then. Um, but I've logged a piece saying I thought that for me, social reporting was um, helping people make sense, which is the you know knowledge out of the cloud of stuff. Um, it was joining up, joining up connections, which is the working across networks, helping build networks, um, and it's helping out, um, which goes across into the work that John particularly does and others do about helping people use social media. So that felt good. I thought, yeah, I want to be that sort of person. So when somebody says, what are you? I go, I'm a social reporter and I help people make sense of stuff. Where's the story? I help join up conversations. So I help people do this stuff. I go, oh yeah, okay, that sounds all right. Um, you have to turn that into a pitch which uh, makes some money, but at least it's good to feel comfortable about what you're doing. It certainly feels more comfortable to me than um, quite a lot of, um, more conventional journalism. So you can expand this. You can say, um, well, the making sense is about listening. It's about capturing, creating, interpreting, aggregating, commending stuff, liking stuff, and so on. The joining up is about <coughs> connecting, introducing people, bridging. 
and the helping out is about encouraging, mentoring, supporting, and signposting. Um, and I did that, and um, then uh, I, I thought, well, there's, you know, there's something missing here because, the, the, as a journalist, you you do have this inbuilt well, the, the critical faculty, um, you know, the need to expose stuff, the need to challenge stuff, and and so forth. Um, I think it was Charlie Becky who came back and and said, um, you know feel free to, cru to scrutinize, to be critical. So I think there is another function in there. Be, you know, be critical, scrutinize if no one else will. But of course, there's potentially tensions here. So if you're a nice, friendly, cuddly, making sense, joining up, helping out kind of person, working for a client who's happy with you doing that sort of stuff, and then you can't resist to go in there with a little bit of expose, a little bit of criticism and so forth, is that gonna screw things up? So that's the really interesting tension um, for me. I don't know, does that make sense?